The most important man on the diamond is the pitcher. He works hard in spring training and must always be in top shape. Mel Stolemeyer, the Yankees' ace right-hander, expresses his ideas on conditioning and why it's important not only to get your arm in shape, but also your legs. Well, I think uh, control is really the name of the game, and control comes from control of your body. Your legs play a very important part in the control of the pitch, and uh, like they say, you can't run the ball across the plate, but you still have to have very strong legs in order to uh, get a lot on the ball. Mel, for the pitcher who has trouble with his control, is there a way for him to get it back? There is a way to get your control back, and that is by throwing to a target. The more you throw, the better your control is going to be. And of course, uh, you don't want to throw too much to hurt your arm, but that's the only way I think there is to improve. You may get a lot of advice from many different people on how and when to start throwing a curveball. How old should you be before you start throwing the curve? Well, it depends on the individual, on uh, the size, and how mature you are at, at that age. But I really think the right age is 12 years old. That is about the age that I started, and I'm still working on it. it takes a, it's a pitch that takes a long time to perfect the control of it and everything and getting the right spin on the ball. But if I had to pick out one age, I would say 12 years old. The quarterback of the baseball team is the catcher. He has to be strong as well as smart. The Yankees have been blessed through the years with many outstanding catchers. Right up there with the best is Elston Howard. Elston, what's the best position for your feet behind the plate? Myself, I think there's a lot of catchers that catch on their heels, but I think that's incorrect. And I think the correct way is to be on the ball of your feet so you can maneuver much better. How close to the hitter should the catcher be? I like to catch very close because I figure I can catch more foul balls off the bat, which is very important, but you still have to govern yourself according to the hitter. If you get too close and you have a double swing, he can possibly hit you in the back of the head. Elston Howard, how can a young catcher keep from blinking when he's behind the plate? This is something that you have to get in your mind that when that ball is hit, you have a mask on and uh, keep your head forward and uh, keep your eyes open. And one other thing about young uh, catchers, uh, when they're playing behind the plate, they have a tendency on a foul ball to turn their head. If you turn your head and you have a mask on, uh, it's more or less you're inviting the ball to hit you in the back of the head. Pop-ups are very hard for young catchers to handle. What's the best way to go after them? I will make certain that the ball is right on top of my head when I get under this ball, and, and this is a way where I can catch the ball right out front, which is very important. But never, if you're going for a pop fly, take a complete turn, because when you take a complete turn, you will lose all directions of the ball, and the nine out of ten times, the ball will fall at least about five or six feet away from you. Elston, what's the best way to go after a bunt? Never go out and grab a bunt with your bare hands. I think one of the most important things is put the glove in front of the ball and scoop it up in the glove because a lot of time if you run out and try to grab the ball barehanded, you have a tendency to fumble the ball. Sometimes a vital role played by the outfielders is overlooked by baseball fans. If you're not sure about who will take a fly ball when you're playing the outfield, here's a good rule to follow as stated by Joe Pepitone, the Yankees center fielder. I think the center fielder should be the captain of the outfield. He should make all the calls. And here's some more good advice by Joe Pepitone on the pop-up between the outfielder and the infielder. The outfielder should call all the plays. If a ball is hit between the outfield and the second baseman and both of them could catch the ball, the outfielder should make the call because he's coming in on the ball. So the outfielder should make the call. He should call that infielder off. When an outfielder goes on the field, the first thing he looks for is which direction the wind is blowing from and how hard. Tommy Tresh has a good tip for you. Well, we used to, I uh, think, pick up some grass and uh, kind of drop it or throw it up in the air and see which way it blew. And uh, this way you could tell which way the wind was uh, coming from. Tommy Tresh also has some tips on playing a ball that gets in the sun. I do this by playing the ball, staying off to the side of the ball a little bit. Also, you can use your glove kind of as a, as a shade. In the beginning, you can uh, put it up above your head and kind of take the glare of the sun out of the way. Tommy, how about when a ball is hit to the wall? Is there any special way to go after it? An important factor is to get back to the fence as fast as possible on any ball that's hit over your head. Uh, keep your eye on the ball and run and, and get back and know where that fence is. But you shouldn't time the ball. You shouldn't just run ar along at maybe three-quarter speed or half speed and uh, just floating under the ball because that ball is liable to reach the fence about the same time you are and you're liable to hit the fence and miss the ball and uh, injure yourself. 
Even with the large gloves the ball players are using today, why is it still important to catch the ball with two hands? You have your, your throwing hand right near the ball when you catch it, and so uh, you have less trouble to get a hold of the ball and get rid of the ball on a throw. No one knows more about infield play than Frank Crisetti, the Yankees' third base coach. Frank has been a Yankee since 1932 as a player and a coach. Frank, what's the best way to play a ground ball? I believe a young fellow in feeling a ground ball, he should move in on the ball. In other words, he should charge the medium hit balls. Baseball, although a wonderful game, can at times become frustrating to the player on the field. You may have a tendency to blow up or to lose your temper. Here's what Coach Cressetti has to say about that. Well, you will not do your best if you get angry. The thing to do is when you go to the bat that you bear down and you get angry at that baseball and the pitcher who's throwing you. You do the best that you can up at the plate. And that's all you can do. No one will ever get on you if you bear down at the plate. But if you get angry, that is not good for you. You will only hurt yourself. Someday in the not too distant future, we hope that you may wear the famous Yankee pinstripes and feel the magic of playing in Yankee Stadium. Mel Stottlemyre tells you what it's like to be a Yankee. There's a great tradition behind the pinstripes that uh, the Yankee ball players put on. And of course, even as a youngster, when I was 10 and 11 years old, my great dream was to be a professional ball player. And if I had any one team to pick, that would be the New York Yankees. And this is what it means to Joe Pepitone. Signing up with the Yankees was a great thrill for me. My first game at Yankee Stadium was the biggest thrill of my life. To be a Yankee is to be great. And I feel great just being part of the ball club.